really love the film and just wanting for both of you did you guys see the final cut of it if so what were your reactions i just thought it was pretty much perfect across the board i'm very biased but what wondering what you guys thought of the film i loved it i mean i i was really impressed with uh with the action i was really really pleased with uh the scenes, the actor acting scenes that were more sort of dialogue driven. With me specifically. With you, can we can we talk about how amazing Clayne was in the movie? How good was Clayne in the movie? Yeah, really good, really, good. really, really yeah. good. So Clayne actually helped you step up your game. Then is that how? <laughs> he, he really did. That's kind of really. That's yes. I don't know if I was successful. Uh, just own it. No, no, no. I mean, you did. You did. I tried. I don't know if he I was able to achieve that. I think I think you, I think you did. You both did a great job. Just um, when we, I think William said you guys have known each other, been friends for over twenty years. So then, was doing this movie a lot easier because that brotherhood, that chemistry, pretty much translate translates over. So it's kind of like a one to one experience. Or am I overthinking things on this regarding? Uh, you're not overthinking it, and I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, I was I, I my, my my family and I we live on a farm. Uh, so when I'm not acting, I try, I, I love working like in the field and with horses and cows and that whole thing. It's very Zen kind of for me. So when I'm doing that, the phone stays inside and my wife comes running out and she's got hold of my phone and she goes, you need to call Max. I was like, what? Now, mind you, I've known Max since 2001. We did the great raid together. We did this Alan Ball project. We did a Netflix movie called Spectral together in Budapest and me and this guy, and never is it just like a small, we're, we're in Australia, we're in Eastern Europe, we're always in these fun places for months at a time. Um, so, you know, so I look at him like a big brother. We've watched our children grow up, one another's children's grow up. <clears throat> he was at my wife's, he was at the hospital, and my wife had my son because I was in New York, a whole thing, right? So my wife comes, I'm in on the tractor, and here comes my wife with the phone. She's like, Max is called. I'm like, who gives a fuck? Right. You know, like I love him, but like, what? She, I'm like, what do you stop? And she goes, No, he's called multiple times, and I just need to make. We need to make sure that his boys are okay. And I was like, Oh yeah, well, of course. And I'm like, What's up, dude? He goes, Are you going to do this movie? I go, What movie? He goes, We got offered a movie today. Are you going to do it? I was like, I was like, Dude, I haven't seen the script. I don't know anything. He goes, Okay, here's the deal. They offered me the cop. They offered you the brother, but we should play brothers. I was like, okay, deal. So I hung up that night. I read the script and I was like, oh, this is a no brainer. And we've wanted to play brothers for, uh, I mean, when I met him, literally, I think on the bus ride to boot camp in Australia, we were talking about, man, we'd play, we should play brothers and something someday. Um, so we read, I read the material. Then we got on the phone with Will and we kind of pitched the idea that instead of me playing the older brother and Max playing the FBI agent, uh, maybe I should play the younger brother, Jamie, and Max should play the older brother. And uh, and luckily, Will was into it. And that was what got me excited. Um, because to have played this role and to play Max's character, you know, I could have done it and, and probably been much better than what he did. Um, <laughs> but I... Uh, There's no rebuttal you, there, I, Max? No rebuttal there? <laughs> uh, I give it to him, I give it to him. Hey, no, but you know what's 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 interesting is that this is our fourth. It is our fourth uh, project together, and we've we did one the the Alan Ball thing. We didn't have any scenes together, but we were in the same show together. the The Great Raid we didn't. I don't think have any dialogue together, and then in Spectral we had little pieces, but it was like this is like the first time that we actually got to act together that we had scenes together we had storylines to explore and uh and so that was cool because that's something that i've really wanted to do with you for a long time is like you know get in dig into something as actors right uh because uh you know i love his work and 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 i just have always thought that like together we could do something pretty special on screen so the, i'm really excited for people to see that stuff i mean i think our work and and uh you know, exploring the history of these two characters is ex exceptional. I'm really proud of it. You know, I, yeah, I, and I think that relationship, I think it, I think it just, it makes those moments seem very honest. You know, there's nothing forced about our relationship in this film. And I think it makes it, it's easy to watch. Yeah. On the easy to watch thing, I, I don't mind watching the quote unquote mindless action, but I love 
um, action sequences which actually tell a story within the story, like Peck and Paws films, like Michael Mann's films, mm. and especially this film was that a reason, another reason why you guys really enjoyed the channel because the action actually is not something that's just a visceral gloss over aesthetics thing. It's more, it's defining the the characters and the story and and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. That's a, you go ahead, Clay. You want to answer? No, no, go ahead. No, I, I think that that's you know, look, that's a, that's a, a bonus when you you know are given a script that that you know, uh, you know, utilizes that kind of a thing to to move the story forward. I mean, that's what you hope for, right? But the thing that I loved about this is like it does have a little bit of a throwback quality to it, and and you know, and I and I and I just love that it's not all about the action. Like I'm all about an action film, but I'm also, I like investing in characters and caring about the characters. You know, it's like, it's one of the things it's like, I mean, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, oh God, the car movies. Why am I blanking on the, the, the Fast, and uh, Furious. Fast and Furious franchise. I'm never invested in those films, you know, like I, I understand why they make money and I get it in a very glossy and the, the action and, you know, but, but for me, I, as a movie goer and an artist, I much prefer caring about the two guys or however many that are leading the film. And I think Will pulls that off with this, which is really cool, which is why I think people should go see it. I think it's one of the the things that separates it from generic action films, you know? Yeah. So I have a final uh, question for both of you. And so after I recommend my podcast listeners to go see the channel, I'm going to recommend, of course, The Killing of Two Lovers, The Integrity of Joseph Chambers. Clay, just the last two to two to three years, have you found that just as far as the people who watch your films, uh, just a different subgroup of people who really love these type of indie driven, just very beautiful movies have you, have you has and how is how have you changed maybe creatively the last several years or or maybe not because you were a veteran and this is those were just two movies as part of a long resume just wondering those those things um definitely there's been a there was a shift a cosmic shift for sure um i think with with killing two lovers i think i operated from a place of fear for a long time as an actor and you just want to work you know, and, and I love it so much. I love acting so very much. So, and being on set and uh, kind of going to the, it's almost like going to summer camp. You meet all these new people and you're all there with the same kind of goal and, and dreams and, or as it relates to kind of the final product. Um, and there was, a, again, there was a shift. And when I did the killing of two lovers, that was the first time I played a character uh in a way that I've always kind of wanted to play a role, you know, and that I saw a guy very kind of just subtle and um, a broken individual. I love those kind of guys. Um, and I think I'm just, uh, I'm trying to choose my projects a little more wisely nowadays um, as than before, where again, I just always found the silver lining, even a bad script sometimes. Um, and and again now again I think the focus has just shifted just a bit. Um, so I appreciate you recognizing those two films. Those are definitely passion projects of mine. And final question, Max. I one I um the next movie I want to see of yours is Sergeant Will Gardner. And I was looking at reviews online, and they're just right off the top. Just people are commenting on how great the movie was, but then more most importantly, they they talk about how it relates to their own lives. As a filmmaker, um, how much? does that mean to you just to you're doing a film you're directing it co-writing it starring in it but then you you get just people sharing their stories with you in with such a special project well you know i i i think that clayne and i get, got involved in these smaller films <laughs> that's the most unprofessional thing that's happened today <laughs> Clayton, you were right. I'm, I, I apologize. So I mean, yeah, should... it's this heavy. Like we're trying to do this Barbara Walters moment. Is that he knew something about your directorial? It was Marco. You know Marco. I do. Um, know Marco. Yeah. Marco will watch this, this interview and feel like shit. All right. So no, but here's what I here's what I want to say is that um, that film for me was one of the most uh, is one of the most special things that I've done in my career and and. Um, the critics were not nice, but I got thousands and thousands of direct messages from veterans thanking me 
telling me that I, I got one one from a woman. I'm going to just share a couple with you that said uh, this movie got my husband back into a program and gave my daughter her father back. You know, this movie, uh, one got another guy that, that, that he asked for a, a, a program that would help him. And I recommended him to Warriors Heart in Bandera, Texas, which is a foundation that I support. I got so many of these messages, and this is who I made the film for. I don't care about the reviews, but, but in that regard, man, it was so rewarding. It was so rewarding. And I think that what happened to me is that because it's a military centric film, a lot of the, the critics, the larger critics looked for, uh, you know, some sort of a political agenda behind the film, which was absolutely bleeping out fucking ridiculous, you know, and, the, and it was something that really came from my heart. So it's one of the, the if I die tomorrow, it's the film that I'll take with me uh, that gave me the most uh, reward, you know, and reminded me as to why I'm in this business and the power that film has to, to, to change and inspire people. And it was really, uh, it was really important for me. Thank you guys so much for your time. Really love the channel. And please, a big request, just do more movies together. Can you guys make that happen? I, and even when you're We're on your trying. Time. Okay, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. See you, man.